Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. My name is Jade and this is How to App on iOS. And today, we're going to be having a chat with... Audible video, audible video. So strap yourselves in for two hours. We're going to have a chat, listen to some music. And we're going to kick it off with a track of his at Sunny's YouTube channel. This is Mangle. Let's do it. Boom.
Good morning. Welcome to the... Wait. Wait. There's still sound. What's going on? What's going on? I <laughs> uh, hope you're all doing okay. Welcome to the show. My name is Jade. This is How to App on iOS. Just let me fix something here for a second. <gasps> there we go. That's better. And it is Friday here in Australia. It is the end of the week for me, so that means it's interview day. I'm really happy about that because I'm going to get a, a well-deserved day off after this today. Yay. And, uh, yeah, I hope you're all doing good. We got a special, a special person on the show today. Now, you may get motion sick with today's show. I'm giving a motion sickness warning uh, before we get into today's show. And I see our guest has already been timed out five times before the show has started. Hey, Mods, you know I love you, but guess what? You can't time him out today. He's got a microphone. So he's just going to have to deal with it. <laughs> we can tell Russ is back, can't we? All right. So let's get on with it. So this dude has been around this channel for ages, man. Pretty much since uh, the channel kicked off. Well, uh, I... Probably a little ways in, probably maybe uh, eight eight or so months, I reckon. He started showing his face around here. And uh, yes, he does have a, if you are a wart warrior, he does have a emoji in the chat. There it is there. And um, I'm, I'm guessing there's 20 people here already. And I know people just want to see who this dude is, for starters, because you know him as Audible Video. You've seen him around the traps. I know him as Kurt. Many of us know him as Kurt. Um, and many of you will know him as quite the smart ass around here. Um, and some people may not know how to take his jokes, but you get used to them. And uh, <laughs> today, we're going to get to put him under the pump and see what he's all about, what ticks inside. So without further ado, let's bring on the mystery man that is Audible Video. Let me make sure I've got all the right buttons here. You can move all you want, Kurt. You've got the following camera. It's not going to work. <laughs> all right, let me do this. Let me bring him in, ladies and gentlemen, without further ado. Audible Video is here with me today. Boom. Yeah. Hello. 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 What's going on? Welcome. Thanks for having me. That's all right. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for getting back to me eventually as well with all your details. Oh, God. It was a week. Yeah, it has been I a actually, week. I, I actually had work. Yeah. Yeah, so did I too. <laughs> Didn't stop me. <laughs> you know I love you, Kurt. Um, so I was thinking this wasn't actually going to happen. Yeah, I was thinking, oh, man, he hasn't got back to me. It's been a whole week. <laughs> Just ask, just ask that Russ guy how dependable I am. Yeah, well, we'll, we'll talk about that because, you know, uh, I'm I'm just as dependable as normal. Joe, Joe Glenn's written in the chat, he looks quite normal. <laughs> 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 yeah. just, just a little, little just, bit normal. Just, I know, a little just bit. a little bit. Um, yeah, Thomas says, I'm so glad he actually went through with this. Um <laughs> Just a teeny tiny little bit normal. Oh, no. I feel like I'm back in Clubhouse now. <laughs> uh, so how's things going with you, Audible? You said you're going busy. Okay. You said you're busy. What yeah. are you busy actually doing? Uh, I had a, a website to design for somebody who wants to do some sort of uh, racing version of Facebook. And then uh, a menu for a restaurant that's opening soon. And how is that going? Uh, we're on like stage, like half for the website and the menu. I'm just waiting for some photos to come back, and I'll finish it up. I hope you're. I hope you're a little bit better with communication. With <laughs> mm, no, I suck at it. Really, I do. Let's, let's before I ask you the the opening question. Let's talk about that for a minute because hey, man, it's an interesting subject. I struggle with getting back to people as well. Like before the show, we we're talking about how I, I've had an app here that I, I got sent in January and somehow I forgot about it and I put it in a folder called apps to review. 
And uh, yesterday I found that folder called apps to review and was like, shit, there's like about 50 apps in here I've missed. And, you know, I felt terrible and I emailed a couple of the developers saying, oh, my God, I feel so bad. Like, I've, I've missed this. Um, it's How hard is it to stay up with everything and keep in contact with people and get things done and reply and, and be everywhere at once in this digital world? There's a – when you're – you've basically got, like, constant – millions of ways for people to get hold of you and at some point you're just going to go fuck it now <laughs> i'm glad you did the first swear of the show <laughs> folks we've got <laughs> we've got a swear jar up the top for every time kurt swears if you'd like to contribute to it today you can do so via super chat or via paypal all money will go to me um fighting youtube for kurt's obscenities um <laughs> Gregory says, I'm getting motion sickness. <laughs> I don't think he knows how to turn it off. I asked you if you could, if I could turn it off, and you're like, nah, nah, I, leave it on. I don't know how to – do you know how to turn it off? I mean, leave I it. Don't, I, th I think it's something exciting. We, we never have anything exciting like this I, on the show. I, I, I'm, I, I'm trying to sit still. <laughs> no, don't do that. Be animated. Move around lots. In fact, make everybody sick right now. Oh my god! Is that is that in is that built into the iPad? I don't think so. I think it's a Zoom feature. You sure? I think it's a. I think it's a, I think it's an iOS feature. I think it's something that they added. God, it's horrible. That's all I know. <laughs> so let me get let me get down to business. What do, what does music mean to you, Kurt? Some of my earliest memories were based around music. So I think that it's part of who we are as humans, as people. And uh, it's kind of like the only art form that you can take with you no matter where you go or what you're doing. Humming a little ditty, making a little tune, tapping on stuff to make a beat. It's we're our own kind of songbird. It's, it's important for mating, for communication, for ritual, for, yeah, anything. How has music helped you with, uh, I don't know, a time in your life where you've felt like the walls are closing in, there's nowhere to go? Has it, Can you think of a specific moment when music has really dug you out of a hole? Yeah, like the past three years. Why? Um, between... We between... COVID, my father dying, and my own personal anxiety, like music or just making sounds and noises and trying to create an atmosphere or giving my mind something nonverbal or non-critical to think about, it's super important. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I'm sorry to know about your father, even though I've known for ages, you know, I, I know you yeah. don't talk to you every day, but um, <laughs> it's... It's a crushing thing to lose a parent. I know anybody here in the chat. I lost my mum when I was really young and still has an effect now. It still has a major effect. Yeah. Like you never actually get over it. I remember when I, I mean, lost my mum, I was always told, don't worry, it's sooner or later you'll be fine and everything will be, and you just move on and build a bridge. And it's like, no, I won't. <laughs> She'll always be like troubling me in the back of my head, even when I'm 50. <laughs> I think the people that you're close to kind of uh, twin themselves inside of your head and inside of your emotions. And so like, they're always there. They're always part of you. They don't go away. And those little things about like their uh, peccadillos or their judgments or their love or their approval or their appraisal, or even just the memories of like, you know, how you guys ate a hamburger or took a hike or something like it's always there. It's never going to go away. And that's a curse and a blessing. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, I think I think people here on the channel in the chat and across other channels know you as a, a bit of a smart ass. You know, you've always got something witty or quippy or, or downright ridiculous to type in the chat and you get timed out and it's a bit of a joke here. But, like, um, we know you away from here. And Leela writes, uh, every time Kurt gets weepy on Clubhouse, I ask him questions about music and especially AUN. <laughs> 
Um, do, do you think? Do you find yourself to be a, an emotional human being, Kurt? I have a high tolerance for not being emotional in a lot of situations, but yeah, I'm a super emotional person. Super. How do you cope with it? Um, I think a lot of it is just finding time and place space to be my authentic self and music is part of that, you know? Or writing poetry or talking to a close friend or, you know, bearing my soul to you jackasses. <laughs> Especially after a few drinks. They're my favorite ones. Oh, God. <laughs> At least I'm not Brad just coming in going, ah, you guys, I love you guys, I love you guys, I love you guys. <laughs> the difference between Brad is Brad would come into Clubhouse drunk and um, tell us he all loves us, and then in the same sentence, tell us he wants to murder us. And then he'll send us a dick pic where you <laughs> you just don't send us the dick pic. <laughs> and you, you don't tell us you're going to kill us. All right. So that's – but you tell us that you, you love us. And that's cool too because we've spent many times talking about, like, anxiety and shit that goes on in the world because it's – um. It can there's get, a lot of shit going on. There's a lot of shit going on. The last person, person, personally in the whole world, you know, there's a lot of shit going on, man. Yeah, I mean, you're up with my age. I've been on this planet 50 years, and it just feels like the last three years. And I know this is this is a bit of a trope, right? As you get older, you kind of say everything's getting too fast and everything's speeding up, and I don't understand kids' music and the clouds are black and all this shit. But seriously, for realsies. The last three years have been like, like what the hell? Like it's it's felt like to me, I it has been the last three years has been twenty years of my life sucked into a hole, and it's only, yeah, only been three. I mean, a lot of people like tend to take it like, kind of like an isolational kind of thing, where like they go, oh wow, you know, my little community, you know, it's changing really fast. It's like no, every community everywhere is changing really fast. Just look at like. The way technology is changing. Just look at how pollution has changed things. Just look at the polar ice caps melting or global warming or fucking like the speed at which media works. Uh, I'm not talking about news because they're dumbasses, but yeah. Um, yeah. Even the speed at people who you thought were okay, like um, who you f like. For example, I followed this guy on YouTube. He has this channel called The Suspicious Observers, and. Yeah. I follow the sun, man. I, the sun's really important. We should be paying note. NASA didn't spend all that money to put freaking cameras around the sun just for the fun of it, right? Because there's some dangerous stuff that can happen to our planet from the sun. Anyway, I've, I've watched this channel for ages, and the last two weeks, the dude's gone bonkers, man. And he's now got a, 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 a channel on Rumble, and he's talking about how there's only one, two genders, and he's just gone total right wing, and I'm oh, like, wow. like, total like Christian and just like really evangelical, and I'm like, what happened to this guy? Things seem to be changing so quickly. People's opinions, people's mindsets, just... Everything think, goes, I, boom. Yeah, I think there's a lot of chaos. And for some people, their coping mechanism is to just dig into something that tells them that everything's okay and they know everything, which is never the truth. Is that all we really want is just to be comforted because we're constantly fed fear? Yeah, I mean, I think that fear is a big thing, especially now. Um politically and economically and socially uh, there are 7 billion of us. And I think there's a lot going on, you know, with that, but we still have the mindset of, um, you know, I know 300 people and they're all around me and I'm walking through the Savannah of fucking Africa, or, you know, hanging out in the village in Europe. There's only so much that our heads are really kind of like attuned to socially. Probably six billion more than what we need. Anyway, that's enough. <laughs> I probably shouldn't. I shouldn't talk like that. Next, next thing people <laughs> think I'm Hitler. Well, no, I'm going to yeah, get demonetized oh, oh. now. <laughs> the first, the first trans Hitler. Good, uh, yeah. good job, Jade. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to cleanse anybody. 
Except my next door neighbor. Anyway, um, let's talk about uh, growing up for you. You know, what hap- you know what happens when you cleanse people? You get a lot of shit. Well, you're left with a lot of shit that you got to clean Poop. up. Yeah, yeah, Poop. exactly. Exactly. Um, let's talk about uh, music, yeah? So do you recall yeah. the music that was playing in your household by your folks when you were growing up? But who were some of these artists? How did they influence you? <laughs> okay, my dad grew up listening to... Uh, marching bands like he loved Sousa he loved classical music so the stuff that he listened to was uh god um but when he wasn't listening to that because back in his day what he had was you know record players and stereos and victorolas and a little wind up shit you know um so I mean literally we have a music box from like the turn of the other other century that uses big giant metal plastic platters and little grooves and slots on it and it goes ping, 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 and it's it's beautiful it's like you know five feet by three feet you know cube yep um but when he wasn't listening to you know god awful classical music even though i like it there's just only so many minutes of it i can take um he was listening to AM radio. So I grew up on like America and Pete Seeger and like all of this AM radio stuff. Talk back. No, 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 no talk back. <laughs> what about your mom? Mom. Yeah. Did you just she... call her? I thought you just called her. I thought you just mom. No, no, no. <laughs> what if she just came in right now? Yes. That would be something that would happen. <laughs> She's a lovely lady. I know, I know. <laughs> uh, now, uh, she, mom loves music. She's in a choir right now at church. She oh, sings wow. soprano. Yeah, she sings soprano and, you know, goes every Wednesday and every Sunday and does her thing. She loves it. She's always a beat. She's always a beat behind the music, but, you know, she's in tune. Uh, my My father was like... He, he wasn't much of a singer, so when we would sit in, I was indoctrinated into the Lutheran church. So, And I, I, I do love them in some ways, but I haven't gone in like three decades. But uh, when we go to church as a family, there would be my grandmother, who was 80-something years old, going, ah, 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 in her little granny voice. My brother, who would like constantly switch keys in the middle of things, uh, my mother, who was always a beat behind, but in key, and um, my sister and I would always just like look at each other, going, "What the <laughs> flying fuck?" <laughs> Second swear of the show. I haven't even sworn yet, folks. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to make you out to be the big swear man today. I, I, I like according to some, swearing is like a form of you know sign of uh, intelligence. Don't don't, I don't try know. and sell that. I swear to God, you see that on Facebook all the time, and that's just uncouth people trying to make an excuse, right? I it think is. if I think I think you can, you can use it strategically to make a point. I, th- I think you can use it all the time. I you know me, I yeah. swear all the time. And speaking of swearing, do you know we talked about this on YouTube? Uh, what F, in, in December? F, F and dude, they're the same. You know, you could just use them in any part of the sentence you want. Dude, 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 dude. I always got told dude means camel's penis. I don't know if that's true or not. I've never bothered to check. But speaking of swearing, back in December, we talked about this on the channel, how YouTube changed their rules and they made it, they they released the word hell and damn from the list of swear words. And everybody complained and everybody got upset. And even I got upset and they made these new rules. Well, yesterday they backtracked. They totally did a they did a 180. They released new rules saying that you're allowed to say fuck, you're allowed to say shit, dick. And even if you go to the YouTube uh, channel and watch the video where they're talking about it, the guy on the actual video from YouTube, the head of... Uh, this section of YouTube of, you know, uh, uh, content restrictions actually drops the F-bomb twice in the video. Oh. I'm like, what is happening here? What is going on? We, have we slipped? All right, puss time. 
Are you ready, princess? Grab your shit, princess. Princess is losing her mind right now. She's like, cats, 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 I love cats. That's princess right now. Damn. Whenever whenever somebody puts a cat on, she she loses her shit. Look at her. She's in the chat. Cat. I love cats. I love cats. She loves pussy. What can I say? Who would have thought princess is princess is into pussy? <laughs> nice. Anyway, uh, we're getting off track here. So, do you remember the first album that you purchased? And yes, the first one, Gen- the first one that was given to you as a gift. It was Genesis Genesis. All right. So that was the first one you purchased. What was it? What? That was the, yeah, that was the first one I purchased. And what format? Vinyl. Do you still have vinyl? Do you still collect vinyl? Yeah. yeah. No, I don't collect it, but I still have it, yeah. Do you have a big collection? Three whole records. <laughs> One. J- <laughs> I, I had, oh God. I, for some reason, I th- I just thought you were going to go, yeah, I've got like 300 of them. And no. Miles no, no, Davis no. and blah, blah, blah. We have a, we have a Star Wars record. <laughs> Genesis and uh, what the hell is the other one? Oh yeah, Rush twenty one twelve. That was those were my three. Well, that's a pretty neat collection. That's a pretty neat yeah. collection. So, um, what about the first one that was given to you as a gift? Did you love it? Well, nobody gave me a record album um, or a cassette, or CD, uh, or, fucking a, um, a disease. Yeah. yeah uh, it was a cassette tape, and I think it was a Vita from a girlfriend in college. A Vita? But don't ask, dude. <laughs> I did. <laughs> it's an interview. What do you want me to say? Um, okay. Um, anyway, well, uh, so how about that? It was, uh... it, was, it, was, it, was, it was one of those things that's like, I'm not really buying this for you. I'm buying this for me, and you're going to play it in your car when I'm around. What a bitch. <laughs> A bitch. I hope you, I would have dumped her for that shit. Uh, I dumped her for something else. Damn, you could have made that story so much cooler and just going, I dumped her for that. Yeah, but uh She was my first long-term girlfriend and she was uh she was batshit crazy. She had a subs she had a su- I mean the first relationship I ever I had long term, she had a substance abuse problem, she was an alcoholic. She uh, lied all the time, and eventually, oh yeah, and she had a multiple personality disorder for real. Sounds like my first yeah. girlfriend as well, too. I oh, know yeah. she was just Scottish. Honest to God, everybody after that's been pretty fucking normal, but that one was just woof. Yeah, my first one was uh, Scottish, and she used to uh, lock herself in the bathroom after a few drinks and threaten to kill herself. Oh, yeah, I did that. Yeah. Can, can I just kill yourself like, thing? And, you know, after a year, you're just like in the other room going, Are you done yet? Promises, promises. Can we move it along? <laughs> uh, just to, uh, you know, make a point uh, mental health is real. Some people need a lot of it. And we should all be focused on it because she eventually did kill herself. Well, there you go. And it's, look, mental health is a serious thing too. Um, and, you know, we we both deal with this on a daily basis. Mine's shit at the moment, I have to admit. But uh, you have to you have to push through it, don't you? It's uh, Going back to the start of the show, everything's so fast and everything's so crazy at the moment. If you take your foot off the pedal for a minute, you're gone. You disappear into a hole. Yeah. And yeah. and you're expected to push through with mental health issues and somehow keep going because, like, as soon as you, you let go and, 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 you know, say, I want off for a minute, you, you, you're fucked. I think it's a lot different for you who's got a, you know, a job to maintain. Yeah, well, you know, I'd, the, lo- I'd demand, love to take the, a week off. Yeah, that demands, you know, social interaction. <laughs> yeah, 
I'm just leaving the house though. But I, I, I socially, you call this a social interaction? I'm in a room well, talking to no one. <laughs> like, <laughs> well, I'm, in, the, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, I'm going to count this because the only other social interaction you have is with your whack neighbor or the postal office lady. Actually, it's not true. Like I've been seeing a lot of doctors recently. <laughs> Uh, uh. So you know, hey, that's a social. In- and I got my eyes my eyes tested the other day. That was a wonderful interaction. Uh, I got to sit down and make small talk for a few minutes, and then she told me that I was blind as a bat. So <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it was great. And then and then I got charged four hundred dollars for it. So <laughs> it, was a, it was a great interaction. I had a good time. You know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, she felt better from it. <laughs> so it's all good. Um, do you remember? Do, have you been to many live gigs? And what was your first live gig? My first live gig was with my brother, and we went to go see Genesis. Wow! See, I, I... at the at the LA Coliseum, and we had like nosebleed seats, but we, like there was so few people there as far as like concerts go that we were able to climb down to about mid mid row. So it was it was great. Was it a good gig? Yeah, it was great. Yeah, I saw uh, saw Rush there too. Um, I'm not super prog rock kind of guy, but I really do love it. I think there's a little arc to it. It's an interesting fusion of jazz and you know rock. It's good stuff. So, do, do, would you say that the, the bands like that? Or stuff that you've listened to have influenced what you make now musically. I think they've they've informed my sensibility as to what is possible, and like I push for that sometimes. So yeah, but it's not like I'm trying to make you know prog rock or anything like that. Well, let's uh, play some music, and then we'll come back and say hello to folks. So this is from your SoundCloud. Just let me make sure I've got it all hooked up here. This is a song called Esoterica. Um, Let me just get my shit together and make sure it's going to play, because SoundCloud is an absolute pain in the nuts. Yeah, sorry about that. It's it's just the way it plays. It's so weird. So let's play this. We'll come back, then we'll talk about it, say hello to everybody, and, and all that good stuff. So grab your nuts, folks. And let's uh, play some tunes. This is uh, Esoterica. Let's see if I can get the right screen up. There we go. Hopefully it's going to work. No, I have to refresh the page. Let's try it now. Go.
Esoterica by Audible Video. Oh, man. Stop, SoundCloud. Why do you keep going every time? Um, so a lot of people probably haven't heard your music before. And we talk about this all the time, about making enough music and finishing stuff and all this kind of thing. What would you describe your music as? Well, I make music for myself. I make noises for myself. And uh, there is, I, I guess, some art to it. I've been studying how to use chord progressions to convey emotionality, like the emotionality that I have in music. Um, and it's been a little slow, but I think I'm getting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. You just got to get more out. And we, you know, we hear it all the time, you know, uh, and, and we put ourselves under pressure to, to get more out. And I'm sure you're just like me and many other people here. Like you, you can say you're not like this, but we all are, <laughs> have projects that are so half finished, just piling up, doing nothing. And because they, you move on to something else that doesn't feel like it's coming together. Do you have a lot of those? I'm guessing your a AUM project list is huge. Eight gigabytes. <laughs> <laughs> you got to get that shit finished, man. This is eight not gigabytes, eight gigabytes of experiments and drones and feedback shit and dumbass beats and like just yeah. You know, it's funny. I was looking at my AUM last night, and somebody said in the chat last week, um, or this week, I think it was, that I should take all the little projects I do at the start of each show and put them out somewhere. And I started going through them last night, and there, there's so many. It's ridiculous. There's a lot. I could yeah. probably chop them all together into songs even. There's so many that are similar beats and stuff. So yeah. I'm, I'm going to do that. I'm actually not, you know, I'm going to do a bunch of shows where I, I take those projects and turn them into things. If if nothing else, just record all the loops in AUM and send them to Leela because she'll make a fucking song out of it. That's a great <laughs> idea. That's a great idea. Maybe we both should do that. We'll just... Both of us will send all our stuff to Leela and um, we'll start a new Loop Master, Loop Master Leela. Yeah. yeah, a new band for Leela. By the end of uh, 2023, Leela will have 23 bands and leave me in the dust. <laughs> that, that's what we're going to do. Uh, let's, no, if, if, if you don't mind, I do want to read this little bit of poetry. It's not. It's not terribly long or anything, sure. but it kind of in, it kind of encapsulates how I feel that I want to get across as far as please do. I know. There's a song I wish to sing, unwritten. Its initial chord stands suspended in the breath of all, as Gabriel's horn yet to resound. In the air it shimmers, in the light motes dance to its preternatural form. It percolates in the humus of the earth, but crumbles to white before the order of its shape. It is unresolved, though the chorus of its longing fills every verse. Its root is long and deep, with no mode to contain a note transubstantiated, heavier than death, lighter than the word. Man, that's deep. <laughs> Do you write a lot of poetry? <laughs> Yeah, I got I got a lot of uh, big words and angst. So yeah. <laughs> well, I ain't got much, but I got some big words <laughs> and shitload of angst. <laughs> so there's a link, guys, in the description down below with uh, a link to Audible's poetry. So go and check that out as well. Uh, that is down there, and I'm sure during this, do you have more that you're going to read out during the show? Um, I might try one more, but it's a little longer. Yeah, that's cool. Um, let's let's yeah. have. I, I was gonna like open up AUM and open up a violin and try and play it over the top. <laughs> but oh, I, God. I thought you'd kill me for that. <laughs> I mean, that would be totally you, so I'd love it. <laughs> I'll get it ready for the next one. All right, we'll do that for the next one. All right. Let me make sure my keyboard's on good stuff. All right, let's say hello to everybody here because we've been ignoring them. Hello, let's now. Type something in the chat so I can see you, and uh, we'll do the bizzo. Let me bring up this so I can see names here. Princess LDG, she likes poetry and cats. And Metalhead Hippie, boom, what's going on? Thomas Christ, uh, Jim Shannon on Sounds, Omni Collective Creativity. Who else is here? Bright example. Um, let's see. 
I have an idea what's going on. Good to see you, Ivan. Uh, SM Borthwick. We've got Leela Lureality, Gregory O'Sullivan. There he is. Joe Glenn. We've got Kim Harden Hudson, Dan Eckberg. There's Audible Video. Fat Panda Cat, Robbie Stingle. I saw Pete Johns earlier. Uh, type something. I know. Pete. Hi, Pete. <laughs> Now's your chance. I'm sorry, Pete. Now's your chance, Pete. Write something really horrible to Audible. <laughs> Do it now. Now's the time, man. Uh, yeah, harass me. Now. Harass me now. Yeah. Um, Russ is here. Russ, welcome back, Russ and and uh, and uh, um, Brad. Good to see you both here. I was, I'm sure there's other people here who I may have missed, but uh, if you haven't typed anything, I'm not scrolling up because we've got to keep going. So, but welcome. Thank you all for being here. And hanging out with us today, yeah. Uh, so I'm reading the chat. Uh, Princess says, I can't say anything horrible about Audible. Well, you don't know him, all right, Princess? You will by the end of this show. Trust me. <laughs> God. Anyway, we, we joke all the time, but, you know, sometimes it's real. Sometimes. Yeah, yeah. Fair, share, fair, share, fair, share, fair share of abuse and jest and then, you know. Well, Every now and then. well, we can all be dicks. Like we can all be dicks, and we, we, like me. Let's let's talk about our friendship for a second. Me, you, uh, Ivan, uh, Russ, Leela, Brad. We hang out every day, al al almost every day, like on Clubhouse, and you know it's quite an intimate situation because we we're, we're just voice and we're talking. Sometimes Gary Hubs is there as well too. There's Gary, um, so. And you can get on each other's nerves. And I know I get on fucking all of your nerves. I know Leela does sometimes because she's full on all the time. Um, you get on our nerves um, because. She... I love Leela. <laughs> we do too. Oh, yeah. Cold Acres on there sometimes as well. Cold Acres on there. Um, I always forget when Cold Acres on there because he's, his profile picture is um, not him. It's always Chris. It's, it's it's Chris Lane Senior. <laughs> I always see Chris Lane Senior pop in, and I'm like, "No oh, man, is Chris here?" <laughs> um, but no, we all get on each other's nerves, and we can piss each other off because that's the nature of the beast. That's what friends do, and you know. But you you build a bridge and you move on, and um, always come back strong. That's the way to 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 go. Um, now, something that I for all the time that I've known you, yeah. I didn't know any of this. You've sung from a young age in choirs. Yep. How? Why? Do tell. Um, I, that's why I read that that, po that poetry because, like, I really want to be musical and to sing. Why don't you my, sing? My, why? Why? My, All right. So, when did you start I, singing? I, well, my first, my first performance was uh christmas one year uh in front of my family i sang silent night holy night all is calm all is bright and i was about maybe 12 so did anybody throw knickers at you no 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 knickers yeah. So you've got a really good voice. So why? So, all right. And then what happened after that? So you sing in front of your family. So you mentioned earlier, like a lot of people who've come on this show, they start their musical journey in, in church. Yeah. That's a, it's mm -hmm. been a really yeah. common thread. Majority of people as they grow up especially, don't go especially back. The, especially the Lutheran church. They're, yeah. They're a bunch of terrible singers, but they <laughs> sing all the time. <laughs> what is it about? <laughs> what is it about? Like, a lot of church music that is so shit. <laughs> now, to, to be honest, you know, like my singing career went on, you know, and I did uh, concert choirs and um, vocal jazz and chamber singers. And there is a shit ton of religious based music that is so beautiful and so profound and so sublime. And it doesn't mention Jesus or God. Well, yeah. N nary once. Yeah. Well, th it's weird, isn't it, when, when you hear songs like that in the church and they're, and they're saying, but but Jesus, but God. And it's like, 
you don't. Yeah, it's it's almost like you you don't actually need to say that. Like we well, we, tell, tell, we tell, can already read in the context of the song without saying yeah. it that we get that that's what it's about. Like now it comes off instead of a song uh, from a, a religious song about your faith and your belief. Now it comes up uh, like preaching. Yeah, the, I mean the stuff that people wrote during the heyday of the church and even now is a lot different than what's in the hymnals. You know, that's, that's for Joe to, to read and sing, you know, that's not for a sublime performance. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it's a little different. Yeah. So, <clears throat> so, so you're singing and was there a, like, um, was there a point when you wanted to sing in a band or? Yeah, I, I auditioned in college briefly for an ACDC cover band, and I realized that I can't sing or scream that high. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, come on. Come on. Fuck it, Black! You can suck! You know, there's only so much of that you can do, you know? <laughs> I don't understand how that guy did, like... A decade of that. I don't understand. <laughs> don't get me started, man. Most people know, like, they go, oh, you're a metalhead. You're from Australia. You must love ACDC. I'm like, what, are you crazy? Why would I like that? It's shit. It's just some yelling guy over the A chord. Like, and they're not even Aussies. They're Scottish. Bah humbug. <laughs> it's off. Um, I, I, why, would I, why did I not expect... Um, Omni mentioned, have you tried covering Queensryche? I'm oh, surprised it wasn't I, Dream th- surprised it wasn't Dream Theater. So Queensryche, ironically or unironically, however this works with Omni, is um one of my favorite bands. I love them. Operation Mindcrime is like an album, a concept album, unlike no other, except for maybe like Pink Floyd's The Wall or and a few others. It's just it's so encapsulated the whole like feel of the late eighties when I was in college with that whole thousand points of light, George Bush bullshit, you know, I agree. Mind Chrome was a fucking awesome album. Really fucking everything fucking afterwards awesome. though, for me from uh Queens right was just toilet. I just unmemorable stuff for me. Yeah. And, and the other one I lo- love, and this is where you and I share a lot of or cross pollinate and musical taste. I love faith no more. Hell yeah to the year. Fuck yeah. You like Muse as well, too. Yeah. You want it all, but you can't have it. Yeah, man. Yep. Love it. So, um, I mean, these are, we're talking about very unique vocal styles here. So are you attracted to unique artists or like, is there generic stuff too that, that floats your boat vocally? <laughs> I mean, I can appreciate like Adele or uh, who's the lady who draped herself in meat one year. Uh, what's her name? Lady Gaga. <laughs> Lady Gaga. <laughs> That's how you remember Lady Gaga. The, the, well, the lady her, who was covered in meat. It was either her or Bjork, and I love Bjork too. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Gaga's done some other really cool things apart from meat. Oh, for sure. For sure. For sure. <laughs> I don't think Lady Gaga ever wore a swan dress, though, or an octopus or whatever the hell fucking Bjork wore. Well, they're, they're very – both of them are really unique artists. Uh, and, and, yeah, And absolutely. Adele is an amazing vocalist as well. I mean, yeah. you know, uh, plus they're able to write compelling stuff, lyric, yeah. lyrically, that, yeah, that abs- hits you. Uh, uh, yeah. There are anomalies, or- I think, in, in today's music because there's a lot of garbage out there that just – Man, I hear it and just go, I've I've no feeling whatsoever from this. AKA no key change. Yeah, well, this is true. Yeah. Like the music industry <laughs> did come together and make a decision to just bury music that has a key change. This is fact. So I don't know if you can see this, but I have like some little CD covers in a display kind of here. And some of my favorites are Stone Temple Pilots, Soundgarten, um, Catherine Wheel, Pearl Jam. Creed, I'm sorry, like the first album of Creed was pretty good. Um, Portishead, Jeff Buckley, Radiohead, uh, Elvis Costello, my friend in Gaggy Ta, like 
you ever get a chance, check out that band, Gegita, G E double G E Y T A H. Um, Curtis Mayfield, Superfly. I love the the whole seventies vibe and stuff. Sting, Elbow, Star Sailor, John Lee Hooker. Yeah, I love music. Who doesn't? You know, why wouldn't you? The, all, all great artists. And what the one thing I couldn't get out of my head while you're looking at that wall is. Wow, this is what CDs have been reduced to because we don't play them anymore, do we? They've just nope. because you've got all that stuff on Apple Music or Spotify, and now, like even Pete Johns, too, uh, his background, all his CDs are now in this little unit, never to be played. It's bizarre, bizarre how um, such a really good technology just got left by the wayside. I mean, music has become a consumable now. Like, you don't even have artists making... Well, I mean, you have artists making albums, but I don't think anybody consumes albums en en masse. So, like, those days of, like, you know, the White Album or Pink Floyd or any of that kind of stuff is kind of gone. I love David Bowie, too. He's, like, my fucking hero. I think there's still people... I mean, hey, there's there's still people who consume music because, like... There's still, yeah, yeah, I'm there's just, still I'm old saying, people. Like it's yeah. young people who aren't consuming music. Like yeah. they're, they're consuming it in bite-sized pieces. And, you know, it's it's a thing. Well, look at this uh, community. Like everybody's so like, you know, consumes so much music. Everybody's uh, in these shows every day on YouTube. Everyone's there saying hello to each other and supporting each other's music. And there's so much music released here. It's it's really bizarre going when, like yesterday, I opened up Apple Music and, was, and I checked, um, you know, latest releases, just generic, you know, releases, and it was like, wow, there's really not much released. Where over here on YouTube, there's like fifteen songs a day released. It, it's quite quite odd. Oh, and there was a time like in the mid '90s where I like went back to school and during my choir stuff where I. I really enjoyed industrial music. So I guess that's a little where Russ and I have a common passion, the dance music. Well, speaking of Russ, let's play some music because Russ sent me this. Russ sent me a track that you two have somewhat worked on. Tell me about this. What is this? How did this happen? Um, I was telling him I can make a thing, but then I don't know what to do with the thing. And I don't know how to like do another bit of the thing. Like, you know, people have A, B, A, B kind of stuff and like how to make the transitions and stuff. So he just basically took my loop and made a song out of it. Right. So with, transi with, with transitions and stuff. Right. So you sent him the loop and he's added everything else onto here. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, it doesn't, uh, it's just called Kurt and Russ. That's all Russ has <laughs> sent me. And and he did it all in like fifteen freaking minutes in Nano Studio. And how long did your part take? No, oh, no, probably dicked around for about an hour. <laughs> well, that's that's pretty good. All right, so let's play this. It's just called Curtain Rust. It's only, I don't have a video for it, guys. It's just sitting here in my audio share. But uh, let's play it. Let's uh, hear what Russ and Kurt have created. All right, we'll see you back here shortly. Let's do it. Boom.
So why is that not being released anywhere? Because I'm a perfectionist, and it was kind of like a th- almost a throwaway. <laughs> it was pra- it was practice, man. It's- Practice is meant to make perfect. Well, or, 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 or you know, I don't know why that's not released. All right, but by the end of this, um, do you think we can get to a point where you start dumping some stuff on us? Yeah, absolutely. That's that's my. It, I'll do it before I die. Part of this before year. Before I die. <laughs> That's not the answer I was looking for before I die. No, but I mean, I'm just saying, I'm just saying, like you know, there's a deadline, you know, kind of for this year to do that. So, yeah, and and, and hopefully before my birthday, which is in July, the the fourth of July. I'm not so. putting pressure on you to release stuff. I I think it's just healthy. Like you know, we talked about this at the beginning of the show. This. Yesterday I did this show and on on that Kindercore song, I was rushed in the end. I put I did the master. I mixed it really quick. Put uploaded it and then yesterday after the show I was like, all right, now's the time. I got to go listen to it and decide should I pull it down and remix it. And I just went, you know what? Who gives a shit? I don't care. It's been done now. Yeah. I, there's no point yeah. in moving on. Absolutely no point. You know, I guess, I guess, I guess, since the the world is it, it, it decided that there's infinite storage space for everything under the sun online, yeah, you just do it. Yeah. Uh, thank you, conspiracy. Let me just thank conspiracy for gifting a whole bunch of uh, memberships, Wart Warrior memberships, and thank you so much for doing so. And um, full on about all the stuff that's happened over on your channel this week, conspiracy. Let me bring my camera back. There we are. That's uh, some full-on stuff. Drama in the community, but uh, hopefully uh, all the best for moving forward. And uh, I hope everything go. Uh, I'll be there to support you on the weekend at Conspiracy. But thank you for gifting those uh, subs, those are memberships to people. I want to hear more music. I don't want to, the next time I, uh, I yeah, I, I don't want to use SoundCloud. I want to see you put some stuff out. I definitely do because... You know, look, I don't put out enough stuff, and, and I feel guilty about it myself. And you know, I'm a terrible example because um, I want to put out. Would you? Stuff. Would you say you're a bad example? Hey, puppy. <laughs> or Jose, or whoever the hell's back there. <laughs> Peppy. We'll call him Alphonse today. <laughs> the, st- <laughs> the drama. <laughs> But it's hard to put music out. Like, I'm, I, so when I say this, like, you know, about putting music out, it's really hard to find the time, and it's really hard when you are a perfectionist. Yeah, it it really is hard because, you know, I am a perfectionist too myself, and I over critique stuff, and I want it to be the best it possibly can, uh, because I don't want to put out half ass shit. I think I think that's you know. Like Brad and I talked about this as far as writing goes, like how you, you know, you can put stuff down and you do it over and over again. And you write it for yourself and you, you revise it for yourself. And at some point when you think it's good enough, you put it out, you know? Um, and I think that's a great process. You don't have to flood the world with every piece of shit that you do. Um, but at some point you have to realize not everything is precious and you have to let it go and, you know, just, just do it. Yeah, in the same token, though, I come from an old school mentality, yeah? Um, what's going on, Cy? Good to see you, Cy, in the chat. Hi, Cy. Um, I come from a very old school mentality, right? So as a kid, I thought it was the thing to do to play lots of gigs. And my first band, one year, we did 200 gigs in a year, you know? And it did fuck all for us. It, it, it did actually bad things. And... Like, you know, uh, you come from the same era as me where to wait for a new album from our favourite band took six years, right? Yeah. So I I think because we have all this tech in front of us, you know, that that means that we should release something every fucking day. And that, I don't think well, that's it's so, the, it's it's the so case. it's so freaking easy, but I don't think that's what you should do. No. I mean, like there's, there's a lot of pressure to, you know, release, release, release. And that, I, honestly, I think it's just part of this community. Or, uh, 
expectation of the community? I, I really don't understand, honestly. I don't think that there's a need to do it. But don't be like Kim. <laughs> be like be, if, no, actually, more people should be like him. Actually, more people should and, be and, like and him. Think yeah, about yeah. stuff a bit more, like, you know. Like, like, curate it, curate it. There's nothing wrong with releasing stuff, but yeah, I mean, cur- curate it and, and like make it part of your statement about who you are and what you do and what you care about. Like, because that's what you're trying to do is you're trying to tell people who you are, that you're human, that they're human. And we all live in this goddamn mud ball hurling around the sun at unbelievable speeds, traveling through the universe who, to who knows where and for what purpose. And uh, let's have a little fun on the way and maybe be a little profound. Yeah, I, I'm with you completely on that. And releasing stuff, so much stuff, you know, means a lot of it's going to get lost in the mix. It's just noise. It's just noise. Well, it gets yeah. lost. It gets lost in the mix yeah. where I, yeah. I, I've, as I've grown as a musician, I've come to the realization that. You release stuff at a point and you make it special. You create that scarcity yeah. and go, I'm going to release something. So now it's special instead of like every yeah. week I've got two songs being dropped every week. It's yeah. It, it means you're going to get lost in the mix and you're going to be make, working way too hard for very little return, you know? Make, an ev- make it an event. Make it special. I mean, yeah. uh, I, Russ has a really good um, – practice where he just like he puts out so much stuff but when he curates and and collates and and you know really cares about a project he puts everything into it and he makes it special absolutely and a lot of people don't realize russ has a lot of stuff on the cutting room floor sitting on youtube that he's uploaded and it's been unlisted from two years ago that he still hasn't dumped that being able to curate yourself to that point is it's hard to do. It's very hard to do, especially like what we spoke about at the beginning of the show. If you take your foot off the accelerator in this like 24-hour cycle of social media and content, there's the fear of people are going to forget who you are because, you know, <laughs> things move so fast. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not the case. I don't think it's the case in this music community here on YouTube. No. I don't think no. at all. I think people remember who you are. Um, I think it's, I, I see, I'm still in that position where I, if I think, oh, if I take a week off, no one's going to remember who I am. But unfortunately, I have to keep doing the show every day because pff, unfortunately it's turned into a business. It's turned into how I pay my rent, which sucks, man. I never wanted this. <laughs> but it is what it is, hey. Um, but, some, but somehow you came up with a plan and you I, went through with it. I didn't. So good on you on that. <laughs> I didn't. I just had a plan to get up each day and do something. That's all it was. Mm-hmm. And now I have to get up every day to do something. It is, And that is what it is. And I love it, but it is what it is. Let's talk about uh, away from music for a moment because you are also a graphic designer. Mm-hmm. How did you get into that? Um, I went to college to study um, engineering and I thought that like my little unformed 18 year old mind thought that's like science and art in one. I can be Leonardo da Vinci (laughs) and fucking shit like that. And they're like, no, 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 no. You are a tool for people to use to build civilization and make shit. And you have to be, so up on your crap and the competition is so high and it's dry, 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 dry shit. Yeah. There is some art to it, but man, I watched the guy down the hall for me who was like, I don't know if he was Arabic or something like that. Basically pull, you know, like 12 hour study sessions and, you know, just try to pull his hair out of his head. And I was like, I don't want to be that guy. So I moved, I moved into art. Right at the cusp of computers, so I had to go back to school to do computer stuff. Right, so it's a studied thing. So it's and and now, are you doing that? Like, does it pay the bills? Is it something that you do? Like you mentioned at the start, you're working on a, a big project at the moment. Um, <laughs> I've been chronically underemployed, so does it pay the bills? No. <laughs> the the past three years have been weird. But yeah, at some point it did pay the bills. Yeah. 
Is it something that you you're wanting to get back to doing? Like, is, is I know this thing that you're working on at the moment is pretty big. Is this yeah. a gate going to be a, a Pete Johns uh, to doing it more a gateway drug? Mm, honestly, I'd love to find a job in, more in the social political arena to to be a communicator of science and of other things like that that I think are really important for the world today and you know moving forward as a species and saving the planet kind of stuff so if i can use graphic design to do that yeah i'll I'll fucking do it but yeah well if we could all change the world with our art um it would be great it's a shame we're not living in the 70s because was that the last time I, i think that art and creativity actually made an impact and moved us to another direction I think, I think was. that was a. I think that was a mentality. Like the mentality is different now. Like everybody has a different view of the world and what everything is for. And I don't know if that's because of just I don't know consumption and politics and the news cycle and just like there's a there's a different gestalt to use a big fancy word. Everybody's too uh, wrapped up in their own self. Yeah, or trying to get ahead, you know, whatever yeah. that hell fucking it means, you know. Yeah, well, I, I mean, you see it all the time on social media. Um, I, 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 I've been guilty of it for a long time. I used to post stuff on social media and go, oh, I'm feeling like this today. And um, <laughs> I tend not to do it anymore. And now when I see yeah. other, when I see other people do it, I just think, shut the fuck up. Honestly, like fucking, we're all feeling that. Like, what do you yeah. want? What do you, what do you want us to fucking like? Like, you know, what do you want? Everyone's feeling it. So, uh, yeah. yeah. I made I made a post once of one of my poetry, and I had a friend, a really good close friend, call me and say, uh, "Are are you okay?" <laughs> well, at least they asked if you were okay. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a good thing. Yeah. You know, normally th- these days I see people write something like, you know, I- I'm thinking about taking my own life, and the next person writes underneath, so am I. <laughs> that's that's where we're at at the moment. So am it's I. Kind of, I, d- I. I understand, like, humour and dark humour and everything, but the constant, like, poeing and just, you know, trolling of people is... I never, I didn't grow up with that. Like we, like your friends would fuck with you like that, but like not random internet strangers. I find it truly sort of bizarre that everybody's ego has moved into that area. Well, I don't think in that that example, I just said that it was uh, someone trolling. I just think they've gone, well, I don't care what, if, how you're feeling. I just need to let you know that I am as well. Like oh yeah, there's definitely there's definitely an I culture for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we like, are we me, are me me me. We're very much in that I culture. And Pete says here, uh, we're trying to have a society here. But I, I don't see the problem is Pete. I don't think uh, most of society got that memo yet. <laughs> <laughs> you're, gonna, you're gonna have to yell that out. You're gonna have to get more subscribers, Pete, so we can get that message <sighs> out. Uh, absolutely. So. Uh, graphic design and art, uh, mm-hmm. you have all the tools audible, graphic design, art, music, you've got all these things and, uh, I'm just, is there, is there a fear of, of turning the key? Well, if I was to lay back on the couch, Dr. Jade, I would say that, <laughs> you know, I think we all have fears. Um, and a lot of it stems from maybe some youth issues. And I'm not going to say like I'm unique in that or that it's really holding me back, but it, it's definitely been a thing. I've had a lot of halting experiences in my life, including. The, in college, I mean, I, I didn't finish college because of my girlfriend who, you know, that was a very difficult time in my life. And that's repeated itself a couple of times. So it's not that I'm unwilling or wouldn't want to. And I try every day too. 
move forward and, you know, barnstorm, bonfire, whatever, whatever the expression is. Let's talk briefly about politics. Mm, my favorite subject. I know it is. Um, and that's why I brought it up. It's not really my favorite subject. It's just, <laughs> I get, I get, get just so, what the fuck? Seriously. Well, we talk about it a lot. We talk, ab- we talk about it a lot. And, um, you know, there are some channels out there that don't talk about it. And, and I don't bring it up every day on, on this channel, but hell, uh, when you're on here, it's something that we talk about. It's something that's dear to you. It's something that's dear to me as well. Uh, I'm trying not to follow it as much as what I used to. I mean, I learned. Politics of, I know nobody realizes this, but politics affects your life. It, it really does. does. It absolutely does. Yeah. It, 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 it affects all of our lives. Unfortunately, um, <laughs> I mean, I don't like the circus of it, so you know, I get that. Well, it is a circus. Yeah. It's uh, like uh, so. There's a lot of conspiracy theorists and stuff like that out there, and there's a lot of nonsense and noise. But like, ultimately, what do you think is the the pinpoint? Just one thing um, about world politics, about the way people govern, that should be changed. Wow, that's a tall order. Um, equal representation and taking uh, the people in politics who are in it for the money out. Now, how do you do that? People have been trying, um, but there's a lot of there's a lot of uh, people who like the way it is because they get the money and they can control what happens. So. Yeah. Get yeah. the money out of poli- get the money out of politics and have the people be able to be represented. You're not going to agree with everybody, you're not going to have all the same goals, but I tell you what, it keeps everything from trickling up. So I'm uh I am a populist, but not in the Donald Trump kind of way. <laughs> He was a good president. Mm, yeah, good for nothing. Man, I was in the US when he got into power, and it was just, it was shocking. It was it was utterly shocking. Mind you, mind you, like, uh, um, both sides are pretty shit. <laughs> in, all, in all countries, all politics, yeah, both sides suck. Yeah. Let, let's be honest. Like, there is no no uh, party that's out in front. They're all, they're all, uh. Got the problems. If I was to say one thing about politics, I would change is to like make bullshit artists accountable and remove oh, them absolutely. as soon as they yeah. bullshit, because that yeah. is that is the biggest problem. Like we all know that uh, money and buying people off is there, but it's the bullshit, it's the lies, and um, the that- lot li- li- lies really do destroy things and that's why people are doing it because they apparently just want to destroy things for their own you know edification and to make money because and because they can that's why like i was born into a religious uh i'm not going to say cult but it is a belief system it is not necessarily reality um and i'm okay with other people's beliefs but some people want to, for their own power and their own purpose, tell you what's true when you can obviously look around and say it and see that it's not. And that goes and that's drifted straight into politics. And I, I hate that weird merger. Yeah, look, it makes me laugh so much that there are people on this spinning ball, right, who can sit here and believe that it's flat, right? Can sit there and yeah. believe that. But at the same token, are quite happy, right, to to believe that lie, to just well, just believe that blindly, and then when a polit- and the, when the running joke in the world, no matter where you go in the world, Thailand, Southeast Asia, go to Europe, go to America, I've been to all these places. The running joke in every single fucking country is we all know that politicians lie. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. it's. It's like, but not, but nobody does anything about it. We all just accept <laughs> it and and turn it into a joke. I don't get that. Well, I don't understand no, it. 
I, I, I am going to say that not all politicians lie, but a fair few of them absolutely do, you know, and I think they make bad examples for the, those who don't and trash, you know, good names and stuff. Uh, yeah. There's only one. That's Bernie. He doesn't lie. <laughs> Bernie doesn't lie. Anyway, uh, let's, let's play a song. Uh, he's got mitt- he's got mittens. How would he lie? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> like, I just don't get it, man. I don't get how we live in a world where somebody goes, "Hey, I want healthcare for everybody. I want people to feel well." It's like, get rid of that guy. He's an idiot. I think it's, I think, I think it's a sign of like you know people not being educated enough. Honestly, that they can live in a world where they can believe the Earth is flat and use yeah. technology that needs to believe in a heliocentric world and around earth and quantum mechanics because they use their fucking cell phone all the time. Yeah. (laughs) We live in a world where people are like, "Ah, screw science. Let me just type that on this device I'm holding that is only possible through science. Yeah. It's (laughs) it's so totally bizarre. (laughs) It just, it is so insane, you know. I'm surprised there aren't more insane asylums full of the ma- those six billion people that <laughs> should be in there. Um, it, it's interesting. Uh, Russ says the world isn't flat. What? Exactly, what? Russ. My sentiments exactly. Let's play another song and uh, we'll come back and talk about apps, man. iOS and apps. Let's do that. So many apps. I know. It is ridiculous. Let's uh, reboot this. And we're going to play Chittering Heavens. Let's do it right now. We'll see you all back here shortly. Boom. Hame, how would you describe the holiday version of you? Uh, I just sort of go with the flow. I don't worry too much about things like details or oh, man. Or responsibilities. <laughs> we got an so, ad. A holiday you I'm so sorry. The same as Let me just mute this ad. Uh, yeah, I guess so. Oh, there is- uh, SoundCloud. It's a it's a great service, SoundCloud. And what is it? It's for what if. It's for what if hotels. Man, I'd love to go on a holiday. That's just reminding me how poor I am. <laughs> Let's do this now. <laughs>
That was wicked, man. I love stuff like that. You know that. I love um, soundscapey stuff, noise, interesting uh, tonal stuff. So that's right up my street. I love that. How was that made? Um, taking a bunch of drones and putting through different apps. There's some stuff. I can't remember the name of these guys. Um, the Satala, no, not Satala, but uh, Apesoft. Yep. And it's like they did a bunch of apps that are super good for that kind of stuff. Where they just you filter through frequencies and you can do all sorts of resonances and crazy, crazy, crazy stuff. Now, a lot of people wouldn't realize this. Um, I, I know I do, and 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 most of us who hang out on Clubhouse. Hey, Zach, what's going on? Um, is that you have a lot of freaking apps. <laughs> I started doing this on an iPhone 4S and I was like, oh my God, you can put a synthesizer on your phone. And as a guy who wanted to buy a synthesizer so bad, like in the eighties when like that shit was like $5,000 and I'm looking at this Triton fucking whatever X in, you know, uh, guitar center that's, that does physical modeling and has drones and s- strings and like all this stuff. I was like, I can get that for $5 and put it on a phone and carry it around in my pocket. And I attach a keyboard to it and make crazy ass shit. Yeah. Give me that. It is outrageous, isn't it? Like um, how quickly people forget as well. I mean, we, we live in a society that, forgets news cycles from three days ago. And it's the same with, like, uh, growing up. Man, I would never thought I'd have, like, a mess of boogie full-on guitar rig set up in a freaking phone and be able to just plug a guitar into a phone. Like, it's, it's, I never ex- I never thought we'd have a phone that you could carry around in your pocket, let, you know, let alone. Could you imagine if... I remember, th- I remember the iPhone came out. Everybody was like, what is this? Brick, is it a computer? Is it a phone? Like, what is this? What is what is the purpose of this? Is this a PDA? And like now, everybody's just like, yeah, it's it's everywhere. It's ubiquitous, and it's it's your portable portable computer slash library slash you know journal slash whatever you want it to be, man. Do you think Steve Jobs even saw where we're at now? Do you think he's, no. he was actually that much of a visionary that he saw this? No. I don't think he understood the uh, ubiquitousness and the miniaturization to the, and the rapidity. Yeah, because it, it, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, they, Apple pretty much created the device, but it's been the developers who've created the, all of the functionality. Like, if, yeah. any, if anything, the, the apps that Apple uh, put on the home screen, pretty boring. And anything that they have released later on in iOS updates, like um, the the I, I can't think of the name of the app. I'm trying to look at it on my device right now. Um, what's that thing we can do, like um, coding kind of thing? I can't think of what it's called. Mm, like text, text, textastic, or something like that, or Swift Playgrounds. Yeah, not Swift, but it's it's um, you can like uh, get it to run tasks. Like, you know, oh, on, shortcuts, shortcuts. Yeah. yeah. Short- that, even yeah, that yeah. was purchased. That was another app by another company and they purchased mm-hmm. that and then they repurposed it for their uh, operating system to be uh, built in. But pretty much everything they, they do is a calendar messages, email. This is all stock standard stuff, but it is the developers that give us all this stuff. And, um, w- then there's this group of people who sit there crying that for $5, yeah, $5. I, I, do, I, th- I think that like it's it's human human nature to take any technology and make it its own. And once it's released, you know, you really don't get a chance to claw any of that back. Because if you do, people will hack it or break it or whatever. And honestly, I'm all for uh, right to repair kind of stuff. Like you don't get to tell me what I get to do with your hardware that you sold me. There's no... That's one thing I really don't like Apple for is their tight-fisted control over things. I understand they do it for reasons, but you know they make it prohibitively difficult to fix your shit, and I I, I hate that obsolescence because it's it's wasteful to be honest. 
Yeah, but uh, again, in in fairness, obsolescence isn't a Apple thing. It's everywhere. It's every single yeah, thing. No, like you know, I, I didn't say I didn't single them out. I was just using yeah. them as as an example. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, the one thing that they like, uh, you know, I don't want to sound like a, a fan bitch for them, but uh, the one thing that they do very well is when you do take something back to them to get fixed because you can't take it anywhere else. There's a lot of instances where they just give you another one, even even when it's out of warranty. Like they they really are one of the only companies who just go here's another one. You know? my, my first my first computer was a Quadra eight forty AV. I spent I spent thirty five hundred dollars on that damn thing, and it came with a C, <laughs> it, and it didn't come with a CRT monitor. I had to spend another five hundred dollars on that for fucking fourteen inches or something like that. And <laughs> yeah, I, 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 I get, I get told by my, 14, my, my inches, sister, huh? 14 inches. Yeah. Right. I get told by my sis, sister-in-law that I swear too much around her. Uh, uh, but, uh, yeah. And, but that thing lasted for eight years and then I bought her another computer and now I sit for eight years and like, I have this 2000, 17 macbook power like their shit lasts man you can't say that about every manufacturer no no Um, uh, these days too everything you buy from a shop has not only warranty from the company but warranty from the retailer they want you to spend money (laughs) at the retailer yeah with their own warranty on top of it and like i don't know if you've ever tried to take something back to a retailer over the manufacturer Oh, retailers aren't too bright. You know. Best, bu- Best Buy's repair services. Oh, me. Yeah. yeah. Like uh, if you bought an iPhone from Best Buy and they asked you to pay for extra warranty, I'd pretty much tell them to get fucked. Because <laughs> you'd take it back to Apple. Like why would you Why would you go to the middleman where they're just going to take that and then yeah. they're, they're just going to send it to Apple yeah. anyway? Like it's so little- Stupid. Little little do you know that they just ship it to Apple. <laughs> yeah, like pay us, uh, pay us an extra sixty dollars so we can take that money and then send it to Apple ourselves. Yeah, it's it's even more than just covering the cost of postage. It's ridiculous. I don't know how they yeah. get away with it, but I mean, this is the world we live in. This is the consumer world we live in, where these companies have the power to do so. Now, so I've been I've been collecting apps for ten years because I wanted that on my phone. You know, my, yeah. my first app was was freaking Thumb Jam. I still love it. Yeah. Yeah, it's a great app. Um, and, and it's interesting because, like, whenever an app's released, I normally ask you, have you already – and I know you've already got it before it's uh, released. I slowed down this past couple of months for sure because I have enough, enough, enough. Like, if something is going to help me with a workflow, great. But I just bought a new iPad, which I'm yes. using right now. Yes. And it's been wonderful. And now I can do the thing that I said that I couldn't do on my other things. So I have no excuses and I'm happy. Absolutely. you did. And and I, I, I'm on the same boat because I have the new iPad as well. And I have no excuse to put out more music than ever before because it has 16 gig of RAM. It's, it's as powerful as a freaking computer. It's- it was really weird because I was you. You said like, uh, can you uh, can you go through your stuff and you know just do a video capture of like one of your sessions, you know, making something. And like I went back through and I tried to open up all the stuff that I had done, which strangely enough worked at the time. And then when I opened it up again, the computer, the iPad's like all and stuttering, and like I get all these red circles with X's through them, and like and like what the heck happened? Like, you know, uh, yeah. So, and also I, I have to say like, name your files, just, just, just do it. Name them. Put some sort of, put some sort of common sense fucking name on them. <laughs> why, 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 why would you do that? Come on. Uh, Cause I have a gig of stuff that I don't know what to do with. <laughs> Cause I don't know what it is. And I have to spend two hours opening, you know, nine different, 10 different, 20 different projects. <laughs> Let me do this. Um, 
Let me do this. Let's do a poll. Let's ask the community in the chat and put a poll up. Um, be honest, folks. Do you name your files? We'll leave that going for a while. Be honest. Don't lie. Do you name your files? I, I, I do now. I'm much better at it. I'm definitely much better at it. Um, but only because I have to, because each day I have to open up AUM and have a file to what I'm going to show the app with, you know, so I have to. In GarageBand, my GarageBand's still a total mess. And the good thing is there is a note section in AUM. Yes. Right below where you where you save and everything, there's a little thing that says notes. You can put stuff in there. And if you don't have, like if you're not using Garat, uh, AUM, there is an AUV3 that you can use to take notes. And then the same same guy who makes that also does like a web client, so you can open a web page and try, as an AUV three if you need to. How like, many how many apps do you think you have? <laughs> I have three pages of folders. So if that gives you any idea, um, do you beta test as well? Do you st still beta? Yeah, test I, I've I, I beta tested some stuff. Yeah, Buttersent is one. <laughs> Everybody's beta testing butter synth. It's never going to come out, dude. <laughs> Hold your breath for butter synth to come out. It's not happening. What's funny? What's funny is the same guy that made that the app Kernu or whatever. He, they had a, a sequencer that they released on iOS maybe seven, eight years ago, and it does some wacky stuff. But like, good luck figuring that thing out. <laughs> How do you go working out apps? I got asked this question yesterday. So, you know, a, a new app comes out, you open it up. Um, do you read the manual or do you just dive in? Or is it a mixture of like knowledge from other apps of how, how you think things should go? And do you get lost often in apps? I think everybody's first thing is like kick the tires. Like, why would you read the manual? And if you want to read the manual, you hopefully, hopefully like four pockets and stuff, like they've got a good manual and some decent videos, because I think most people don't have a lot of time to invest in figuring out every single interface and every single routing and every single layout and every way to hook up stuff. So yeah, they want use cases. They want um, like, what does this tool do for me that other tools don't? See, I don't read the manual. Uh, it's not the first place I go. I normally open up the app and, again, just mess yeah, around. Yeah, kick the tires. Mess around, yeah. kick the tires, see how we go. Unless there's something that, you know, I'll only open the manual if there's something I don't understand. I, you know, I'd look at it and go, I don't know what this is doing. It seems like it's doing nothing. Let me find out what it does. Mm -hmm. but, but, again, like, I think you get to a point, especially doing this show, where there are so many synths, right, that – they all do the same thing. They all have oscillators. They, they, they all have filters. Yeah. Like once you understand what an LFO is and a filter and an oscillator, you're pretty good, you know, and a wavetable. I think the biggest issue is hunting and pecking around. Like, is it in a tab? Is it, can I hook it up to anything? Does it have an external MIDI CC control? And like, that's the kind of stuff that you have to, that you struggle with, I think. That's, that's the kind of stuff I struggle with. It's like, okay, I know it's got all the things, but how do I hook it up? You know, that's why, that's why I end up with like Russ, like Russ, you know, he's got like a few, a few favorite synths and he just uses those over and over again. Cause they kind of, kind of all do this. There is, there is a lot of difference for sure. Because like, you know, you can't say that Apparillo is the same as, you know, um, you know name another synth. You know? Factory factory or anything like that yeah you can't no they all they all have their 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 spunk and differences i mean it's a little bit different with reverbs there's a, yeah. there's a lot of reverbs and you know it, there's only so many reverbs you can have there are some really good ones that you go to and yep. and know it's always going to sound good with very minimal movement um so i think it's everybody scared. go buy rim De everybody go buy rim De gear by the way yeah, Rim de Guerre, wicked app. Uh, I, I often get worried sometimes that I'm – I try and slow down my tutorials and I try and really speak goo goo gaga, right? But uh, I'm so still worried that sometimes, even after, what, two and a half years of doing this, there are people who don't know what an LFO is. 
or an oscillator. They don't even know what a sine wave is. And I need to know, I need feedback from people to let me know, Is do people want me to do a show where I just sit down and go, this is an oscillator. This is just a whole show on an oscillator. Ever since they came out with like physical modeling on like that Triton that I said, yeah. I, I was so on about, like I looked into what synthesis is and I don't think I really got it until I got my own synthesizer, like a piece of hardware that you can hear and feel the sound and the electricity kind of trickling around like virtual stuff on the computer is okay. But if you can spend $200 and get a desktop synth, I think that would help a lot of people not to advocate that you need to go out and buy your rack or anything like that. But um, I agree. I agree with that statement because I, 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 I do feel like you know, like when you're making a sound, I think that they picked four waveforms for a reason and really everything's a sine wave anyway. Yep. But the way they got around that was to pick all these other standard forms and then used filtering and effects and movement to create all that stuff that we now come to expect, you know, and I think it's beautiful. And I think there's a lot more room for expression still, you know, with uh, MPE and pressure sensitivity and aftertouch. And like, you can get really, like if you really wanted to take a super simple two, two oscillator synthesizer and patch, all the expression that's available now into it, you can basically use it like a voice, like yeah. a literal human voice. Yeah, I agree. Like, um, you know, when I first started this show, I knew nothing about synthesizers. I'm a metalhead. Most people know that. I like I like music from across the board, except country and western. Um, but uh, unless it's Auntie G. Um, but, uh, you know, but I'm, I'm open to music. I don't think music shit because I don't like it. But opening my eyes up to electronic music has been really, really cool and understanding synthesis. But it really wasn't until I bought this little thing yeah. that I got to actually physically, like you can have, you know, you know, uh, MIDI controls and stuff, but this is not a MIDI controller. This is something yeah. that generates sound. And to actually sit there and turn a knob and, turn and, it and feel it and yep. see it change, and yep. well, that's when yep. I, I think I finally understood synthesis. All the apps that I was sitting here telling you, oh, yeah, this is how you do it. I had no idea what the fuck I'm talking about. I, th I think if you buy, if like, it, it, it's it's a little expensive, and you can get this in almost any yeah. synthesizer. Just like, just take whatever synthesizer you have, create a sine wave, and in your effects chain, put a wave folder, right? And like, just turn that dial a little bit and see what happens to the sound. And if and get a, an oscilloscope. They got lots that you can use on the store, um, and a lot that are AUV threes. So you can see how the shape of the wave goes from you know this to this to this, you know, and what that sounds like. And then you can kind of like do sound design from there. You know, put an effect after it, filter it, do create your movement. It's like anything, really. You just got to fuck around with it, and you, you you'll it's get it. You'll get it eventually. Don't be afraid. That's the thing. You can't be afraid of it. For the longest time, I would get a synth app and go, oh, man, another synth app. And I'd open it up and just be terrified. And this is me. I'm supposed to be showing people how to use it. And I would get paralysis looking at all the knobs going, man, th there's more <laughs> knobs here than when I did sex work. You know? Yeah. If you, if you ever watch, if you ever watch uh, Sonic Talk, the British guys, you know, there's a guy who's, like, constantly talking about, like, his, his need for uh, – cross through like square waves you know how they phase in and out but like any synth nerd will tell you like they want a knob per function because they just want to be able to turn that knob and have it do something you know yeah and be able to just not worry about like oh i gotta i gotta do like read the manual to create the things like they just want to be able to like honestly just stick, stick around Let's play some music. Uh, I'm going to end today with you reading some poetry. How's that? That sounds good. Cool. Uh, let's play. This is a Mononoke experimental track. This is from three years ago. Um, so let's play this, and then we'll be back to wrap up the show and then dump you all over to Pete Johns. So let's do this. So let's show you behind the scenes of me trying to work out this thing. SoundCloud. <laughs> it's, 
Is it playing? Let's give it a go. Man, that was so, <laughs> so relaxing. <laughs> I was just sitting back here just like this. I was like, oh, shit, we're live. What's going on? That was really nice. That was really relaxing. Um, you definitely got a unique style too as well. I like that you're not like everything else. 
This is why I think you've got to get more music out there, Kurt. Absolutely. I, I want to be able to open up and over this this year and open up my show. Well, that's changing because uh, that's you'll know more about that. But open up and play some of your stuff. You know, it would be nice because it, it it does feel like one of our mates is not is not yeah. I, we've got so many cool artists and and then you know. Meanwhile, you're getting timed out every day and getting banned on Hippie's channel. <laughs> <laughs> How the fuck did you get banned on Hippie's channel? <laughs> I probably sent something smart ass eating. Yeah, <laughs> and he probably took it the wrong way and because he didn't know who you were and put you on the ban list. <laughs> uh, more, uh, more, more, more to the point, how did you get off the ban list? Because that's a hard thing. That was you. Oh, did I get you off? Oh, yeah, yeah. There was the emails. There did was I, emails. Did but, I get you oh, off? Hey, hey. Oh, hey now. Uh, that's later on. That's off air. Um, normally I would ask you to uh, tell us some of your favorite apps, but we are running out of time. So, uh, you know, there's so many apps. Like I don't want to give people app paralysis anyway because that's what we do here on the show every day. It's, it's over the top. There's mm -hmm. so many apps. Just buy the ones that make you happy or download the here's, ones that here's, make you happy. Here's my favorite app, AUM. Yeah, AUM. It's, it, it's funny, it ch isn't it? It's it it changed everything for me. Yeah, I was scared of AUM for so long, so long. And speaking of it, I'm just going to open up something because we're going to you're going to read some poetry, and I'm going to look for this cello because I said I was going to play some cello while you, while you read your poem. I think I think I think splat to cat would splat to clat would be more appropriate, but you know, you do you. Oh really? I want to I want to play some. Yeah, like I said, you do you. We'll do it. I've got to set up two uh, keyboards for this, though. Let's see. Hang on, hang on a minute. Uh, see, SoundCloud's still playing in the background. Just keeps going, the old SoundCloud. Right, we can take off some of that reverb. <laughs> oh, God. <sighs> This is gonna. This is totally gonna throw me off. This, this, this. All right, you let let me get a little groove in before you start. Okay. I will. Okay. I will. No, just, I wouldn't just, just start straight away because it's gotta. It's gotta lead in. Like, give me uh, some pauses too, so I can add some stuff. Well, before we do this, I want to thank you, Kurt, for coming on the show. Um, it's been a long time coming and, you know, a lot of people haven't known who you are. We just see you in the chat. So it's always a big thing coming on here. And I, I, I think it's brave of people to come on here with me. <laughs> so and I, 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 I is human, not chat, but. And I'm, I'm a... <laughs> but thank you for sharing a little bit of your story. We could talk for ages. There's so much we didn't cover, you know, absolutely. Cause, to, cause it goes fast. Two hours seems like a long time, but it, but it does go fast when you're actually here doing it. Um, everybody always says that anyway. So, uh, all right. Uh, now, folks, Kurt's details, his uh, Instagram, his SoundCloud, his YouTube channel, it's all down in the description. Go click it. Go go support him. Give him a rah-rah. Leave some comments on his videos and tell him that he should release more fucking music. And uh, just like we say all the time too, and he will. And, and that will be awesome. I want to thank everybody for being here in the chat because I'm going to dump you over to Pete's show immediately after this where Pete's talking about bots. Good old bots. Bots. Huh? bots. bots and bots. And Thomas has put a link there. All right. Well, let's do this. Uh, so next week I'll let you know it's it's uh, interview 100 next week, guys. 100th interview and we got the very first person I interviewed on this show is making a special guest appearance for the 100th. Hundred interview this weekend. Also on my opening hour, I'm doing a tribute to Counting Crows. Totally acoustic. If you love Counting Crows, trust me, come and check it out because I love Counting Crows. I'm going to do a super version of all their stuff, not all their stuff. Anyway, let's do this. Kurt's going to take us out with some poetry, poetry in motion. Remember, do the things that make you happy. Mistakes make you better, and we'll all rise together. Take it away, my friend, Kurt. Let's do this. Why have you got to? You got to tear me down, pull me down just to build you up. It makes me want to tear it down, bring it down. You've got to see what's going down. Why don't you help me up? Instead of listening, you put me in the ground with another round. That's just so messed up. 
pants falling to the ground, hands raised, praying, you better not be looking. I can't make another sound without you keep me, beat me, choke me on the ground. But suspicion then chase me down, bust my crown, then lock me up. Let's be blunt about my sentence. Extra fear for being brown. No new crow, Jim. Jumping up and down, tears all around, bleeding, blood flowing, trying to soften the hardest ground. Why have you got to? You got to tear me down, pull me down just to build you up. It makes me want to tear it down, bring it down. You've got to see what's going down. Why don't you help me up? I can't breathe. Tear gas all around. You can't stop saying thug. You keep coming. Dog whistling to my house. Shoving King in my face. Hoping Malcolm doesn't show. Running, running your mouth. Looping, looping, blaming, blaming. Endless news heads bobbing, shaking, shaming. Cycling and recycling propaganda for policy. Replacing my protest with your fears. Brother, you ain't from this town. Why have you got to? You got to tear me down, pull me down just to build you up. Slow motion racism replaced by faster cynicism with guns, snipers, cameras, and camo. Tanks, tear gas, one system grinding down as the military law enforcement gears up. One contract, one society broken. Can't you help me up? Mothers have to beat down their sons on TV to keep them from their fathers. And you wonder, you still wonder where the fathers are when you've got them all locked up. Those drugs are different than these drugs. Cocaine is different, separate but equal. But this war started long before crack was street king. The Republic's southern strategy, divide and conquer, backs me up. But tough on crime, you'll pay the fine, you'll do the time. Black and white is the law, procedures will be followed. Over when true judgment is forsaken and compassion is all used up. All I can do is cry, justice is blind, and tear on up. We'll all rise together Cause you make me shine better And we'll all rise together You make me shine better